Welcome to An Abundant Future with Matt Powers. I'm your host, Matt Powers, and we're talking about regenerative solutions that you can use in your daily life right now, as well as what's coming down the pipe with experts and leaders from around the world so you can know what steps you need to take to guarantee an abundant future for you and yours. Thank you for being here. Today we're talking about simple soil solutions. Have you ever looked into some of these newly popularized soil amendment systems and just felt overwhelmed by the steps, the time, the labor, and the cost for the special ingredients and inputs? Shouldn't working with nature be easier? Not like some advanced chemistry set, right? Well, it really doesn't need to be all that complicated. Soil is pretty simple, actually. Though people are making money all over the world making it sound complex. I've worked for years now with Dr. Elaine Ingham, a leading global soil scientist whose groundbreaking work has changed composting and soil biology forever. And she can break it down to a cartoon level. And she's done this on video with me when I visited her. It's so simple, children can understand it in a Saturday morning cartoon format. Can you dig it? Okay, so let's dive in. Here we go. It's all about organic matter. Why? Well, where does soil come from? There's the physical action of breaking up rock into the mineral base of soil, the clay, the sand, and the silt. But what makes it soil is the organic matter and soil life added into that. So organic matter is anything that has lived, is biological, and can decompose into soil and then be incorporated again into biology. Without organic matter, soil life has nothing to support itself, no food, so it's just dead dirt. Soil life comprises a whole food soil web of diverse characters, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematodes, microarthropods, arthropods, worms, birds, and more. Their holistic interactions form the cycles that support and build and enrich soils. And soils are the medium for all life. So where does the soil life come from? The biology we call soil life is actually everywhere all the time, even if we can't find it readily. Thermophiles, for instance, are the bacteria and fungi. Yes, fungi, though some books will say there's only bacteria at these temps. They are wrong. That arrive on the scene when conditions are right. They break down your organic matter in a compost heap at temperatures between 131 to 140 range, ideally. But as it cools, they leave the pile and other local bacteria and fungi from the soil and air begin to occupy the pile. These could also be called indigenous microorganisms. Though, in the future, I'm sure we'll just call the fungi we work with by their names as soil science and awareness continues to evolve. What does soil life do? Here's an awesome quote from soil scientist Dr. Elaine Ingham that was featured in Permaculture Magazine North America. The soil food web performs the following functions. Cycles nutrients in rocks, sand, silt, clay, organic matter, the total nutrient pool, into plant available forms, i.e. soluble nutrients that plants can take up. Retains nutrients in soil so leaching losses and erosion do not occur. Protects all surfaces of plants from disease, pests, and parasite attack. If a plant is dying, it is because the proper biology was not present to prevent an attack. Decomposes toxic chemicals that would otherwise kill plants converts wastes into plant beneficial materials, and possibly the most important, builds soil structure. It converts dead plant residues into well-structured, well-aggregated organic matter, allowing the free movement of atmospheric gases, water, and roots through the soil." End quote. Pretty amazing. Fungi is largely responsible for creating the soil structure we have. They take the microaggregates that the bacteria makes and then makes macroaggregates using sugars made from photosynthesis. So that's just carbon dioxide and sunshine. Uh, and when we till, we kill the fungi responsible for this and we create an artificial loam that collapses each season. And that's why they constantly have to till. The structure is made out of carbon from the air and accounts for 30 to 50% of the carbon in the soil, depends on where you are in the world, really. So when we talk about carbon sequestration and farming and soil, this is why fungi is so important. This is why no-till is so important. When we use biocides or chemical fertilizers, we also kill the fungi. And we set back the system and start over with dirt in need of soil life and organic matter. I was able to flip my dead dirt into living soil fast with a few easy, simple steps that take a bit of work, 
but in the end are ultimately the path to hardly any work. So once you do these things and get them started, it's very easy to continue them and maintain them. Okay, so how do you make it happen and how do you make it easy? The static compost, number one. This is where you are taking all your kitchen scraps, animal bedding, manure, and yard waste to decompose without turning. Usually this equates to worm composting, like vermicompost. Whether they add the worms or not, they usually show up. Try using multiple worm types, not just the red wigglers, because they'll go into different heights and different levels in the pile and do different things. You can use a pit, bury it regularly, mix in carbon sources to balance out the diversity of the kitchen scraps. You know, the sky's really the limit. You just gotta keep on it and make sure that it's not becoming you know rotten like if it's all juicing material that's going to go rotten really quick and you're not and you're going to lose a lot of those nutrients so you want to keep it balanced so you could be chopping weeds from your yard and adding them in there's lots of different options number two the hot compost this is where you're combining a third green plant material this is plant material that is that hasn't gone to seed it you know it can be dried down doesn't need to be fresh and then a third brown plant material, this is plant material that's dried and has gone to seed. And a third nitrogen source like manure, the fresher the better. Combine in a one square meter pile in layers, this will quickly heat up and need to be turned or will start gassing off precious nutrients. Turning the pile when it gets too hot or too cold is vital. The ideal temperature range is 131 to 140 Fahrenheit and the hot decomposition or composting process takes about 15 days turning approximately five times or more and will need time to cool unless you use it to burn back plants for a clear growing area come spring. It is a fast, uniform composting method for a quick soil solution. Take some work and practice, but it is vital if you're in a hurry. Compost tea and broad forking to inoculate, deep deliver and aerate. So when we make compost tea, we can make it in a bucket and stir it using our hands, a stick, or like a machine, like an aquarium pump. The idea is to brew the compost in a porous bag in a heavily aerated container to keep the soil life alive, the aerobic soil life, the air loving soil life, and proliferating before adding it to the soil or spraying it on plants. You can use either thermo or vermicompost or both for a greater diversity. The best broad fork I've heard of is the Meadow Creature because it focuses the weight as it goes down. It narrows, so you can really get into tough soils. You can follow the aeration work with a soil drench of compost tea for a rapid soil transformation. Get it in there deep. And then, finally, number four, mulching. This can be chop and drop, chips, etc. Anything to keep the soil life fed, protected, and building more soil. That means you don't use fake mulch. You're not covering with non-biodegradable stuff. You're covering it with stuff that will feed the soil life, that will break down and be become a benefit. If you have poor soils, take heart. All soils have all the elements to grow anything. They're just missing the soil life and organic matter to unlock the nutrients they need from the non-soluble elements of the soil, the sand, silt, clay, and the rocks. You've waited long enough for great soil. You deserve rich, chocolate-colored loam that keeps building year after year. It starts with composting your organic matter, scaling up soil life, and protecting and feeding the soil life. It's just that easy. So start today and make the world a better place while you do it with greater diversity, carbon sequestration, food, soil, and health. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively.